Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Steven and I'm going to show you how to restore your Ubuntu Boot Splash using the Startup Manager and Plymouth Manager. Now we need to start by opening up Terminal and you can do that by pressing and holding Ctrl Alt T simultaneously and it should pop up a window like this. Now we're going to be entering commands and you can do it separately or all in all. Let's start it. This is what the command should look like. We start off with sudo apt get install startup manager. Now I put a dash y in there to automatically enter the yes command or the yes option when installing. Next we've got the sudo app add repository which is the ppa mefio dash g slash plymouth manager. Next is the update for the repository, your sudo app get update. And then there's the sudo app get install and again dash y Plymouth manager. Now for those of you who are using for those of you who are using um watching this on YouTube so I will put this command in the description. And for those users who are following this off, you uh, sorry Ubuntu forums, then you can follow this, follow the methods above, and I'll also put the again the command underneath as a description. So you can pause this video, copy and paste it in, type it all out. But what I'll do now is hit enter. Ask for your password, obviously. Now, whilst it's doing that, I'm going to pause the video and continue afterwards. Welcome back. Now, everything here has been done. And as you can see, it says it's already installed to the newest version. That is because I have tested this through once before and it's not been quite right due to me t in typing in wrong. So what we can do now is close our terminal, go to our dash if you're using 11.04 and upwards, but this tutorial should still work on any Ubuntu that is using Plymouth. So we open up the dash, type in not poly, plim or ply, and it should come to this first one here, Plymouth Manager. You open up that. And as you can see we're under the general tab. And we've got themes, create your own theme. Now under select your resolution, select your screen resolution. Now I'm going to set mine to 1024 by 768 due to when it you want to boots up, it's booting on my main screen which is a which is that size. And at the moment I'm using my T V which is which is this size. So you select the resolution you are currently using on the main screen you use at the very moment of the time. So you click change and that'll pop up with a window down at the bottom here. Just type your password in and it'll automatically update group. Now where it says enable disable Plymouth should say disable because Plymouth should be already enabled. If it is not enabled, then there is either a problem with Plymouth or you don't have Plymouth installed. Right, sorry for pausing, my headset We're coming off. Yeah, so if, you, if it's enabled, if it hasn't been enabled, it says enable, then there is a problem with Plymouth or it's not installed on your system. So again, my headset came off again. Right, so again just make sure that it says disable, not enable. Now if you're using the Berg bootloader, you click use this and this will make your Berg compatible with Plymouth. But I'm not using that at the moment because I'm only on a single boot, not dual booting. If you're using closed source video drivers such as NVIDIA, HI, Intel, 
click on this begin button. Now no other window will pop up but what it will do is patch Plymouth and Grub to work side by side with your closed video drivers such as NVIDIA which is I am using. Now we don't need to use this as we don't need to do it manually so we'll click to the next tab which is themes and I'm collecting, selecting this theme here but you can select any one you want and as you can see it's matching with my current theme which is this, this default Ubuntu theme so once you've selected your theme you can click apply and install theme which will pop up here under the window so you type the password whilst that is doing what it is doing which is updating the Grub and Plymouth for, for when it boots into the correct Linux kernel and Linux headers that is currently updated so I'm going to pause it here and continue once it's done welcome back it has now installed and applied the theme but what I'll do now is talk you through the create your theme now what this, would, now what this allows you to do it's like a PNG file which is no bigger than 500 kilobytes which I'll quickly show you we'll put that there and if you click on create theme it will create that into a into the theme file which is needed to allow Plymouth to boot with your image you used and you can install it I am not doing either one of these purposely because I have not tested it myself as I do not want to test it but you, or you yourselves can experiment that if you like. So what we're going to do now is close Plymouth Manager, go to our dash, type in start, and we want this one here with the spanner, wrench, whichever one you like, but it's, you can tell it says startup manager underneath. So you want that. Now it will, your screen will go blank and will come up with a perform administrative task window for your password. Just follow it through. And as you can see it's doing a performing pre-configuration tasks. Which you're always doing is checking to make sure that your configuration file for Globe and Plymouth is not corrupt and is as in intact and is intact so. As you can see, I've already tested this before, but what I'll do is just quickly change what it should be looking like on your screen. Right. So under your boot options it should say 10 seconds for your timeout. This we don't change either way. Your resolution should look 640 by 480 and 8 bits as you call it. And you should have short text during boot. So, as you can see from mine, we don't have this enabled. We just have show boot slash, which will enable whatever boot slash you theme you've chosen. Change the colored depth to 24 bits. Now, the resolution, only change it to the resolution you're using on your current screen. I'm using 2. My secondary screen is my TV, so I, it won't boot into that. So it boots into my primary screen, which is my 1024 768. We'll, as I said, we'd leave the default system operating system because that is updated automatically when a new Linux header and Linux kernel is downloaded and updated. Now, the timeout in seconds, you need this is a warning to anyone who is dual booting do not change or not do not decrease the timeout less than 10 seconds, or else you won't have enough time to boot into if you're using Windows or if you were booting to any other operating system you're using. But because I am using a single operating system which is me Ubuntu, I am going to use 5 seconds. Now we can use the advanced if you like, but all it does is change your bootloader menu 
So I'm just going to set that to same as my first one. And once you've done all of that, click close. And that will perform the post configuration. Save it all and patch it. And once this is done, I will restart my system, take a still image of the boot screen and in its graphical form, I'll edit that into the video and upload it to YouTube. Now, this is, as like I said before, the code, the commands will be in the description and on YouTube and if you're using Ubuntu forums, I'll also do a description for the code in the post on there. So thank you for watching and I hope this works for you.